urine in Buddhism? Yes. Let you see that. The first one, the first precept or the first moral obliga obligation of lay person is no killing. No killing does mean including no killing human life or animal lives. Yes, the great the um, the grave offense is to kill other uh, human beings, and the lesser offense is to kill uh, animal beings. Uh, last night I talked with that group of people uh, at the church that yes, we love our pets, we love our cats, our dog. We don't what we don't love our chicken, or our cow. You see that? That's not real compassion. That's just the love, that's just the attachment. If we love animals. Just mean we have to respect all lives <coughs> instead of just um, loving the cat and not alone. So the compassion need to be universal. Need, we need to spread that kind of loving kindness to any living beings, whether they're small or they're big. So now, uh, when of course when we talk about abstain from killing. Uh, yeah, this this big word, right? Abortion. We still have some arguments uh, for choice, for life, uh, in in most of the traditions. But in Buddhist traditions, as much as, you know, uh, the uh, 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 the emperor has some kind of consciousness that he could not kill, even even for the first week or for the last week. As Marxists has a lot, yes. What about suicide? Commit suicide? Oh, yeah, we have, I forgot before we did. Well, OK, that is a great plan, too, because um, we have to know that in order to have this type of human body, it's not easy. We have to accumulate so many good karmas in order to have this body, whether it's just a, a, a male or female body. It's so because um, look, of course we have six billion people on the earth now, right? Right. But if we compare with all the pieces on the earth, we far less than that. The ants, the insects, but and so on, right? So the reason why would I say that having this uh, human body is the most pieces one? We have the chance to develop our wisdom. We have the chance to become Buddha. We have the chance to have others. Look at the, the dog, the cat, the, the pets, the, the, um, the animals that close to us, even the monkeys, even the elephants, yes. They can imitate us. They can listen to us, right? But they, they may not have enough wisdom. Or they may not have that much intelligence like us. So to end this space body is like this one of the most great offense in Buddhism. We have to take care of ourselves. And also, if we talk, I will talk on that. We need to appreciate um, that our parents gave us this body. We need to appreciate our family members, our societies, and so on, to support this piece of body. So we need to use this kind of piece of body to do some kind of beneficial things to others, to ourselves, instead of ending up it without any reason. Of course, for the late, for the, the young people, the, the rates of uh, um, committing suicide is, is much higher because they don't know the meanings of life. The reason why they think, okay, if I end up my life, everything is okay, everything will be end. But in Buddhism, you no. Know, remember the sixth part of cycle. Well, now, another thing we need to remember that if, if uh, we believe in reincarnation, the moment that we end our life, at that moment, we're not at peace with ourselves. What, what? We're not at peace with ourselves. We're not happy with ourselves. The reason why we end up our, our life, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we we'll live in the normal life. So what happened at that moment, when we just pass away, our consciousness carry the, the anger, 
carry the anxiety or carry some kind of mental afflictions and it will lead us to the lower realms. That's more suitable for that kind of talk. So it's so dangerous uh, when we talk more deep about that kind of problems. Yes? I'm, I'm pretty sure I know the answer. If you had a, a household pet, a dog, that yes. was suffering greatly, you have compassion, some kind of compassion to put mm -hmm. it out of its misery and suffering, and you had it euthanized. Mm -hmm. From the Buddhist point of view, that would be wrong because you're killing. And you're making that decision. Would, would I be correct in that? Uh, I, I kind of walk through that a little even, bit. Even, even, actually, I, um, I encounter many uh, cases personally that uh, many Buddhist people, they're sincere Buddhist people, but they have uh, their relatives who are lying, uh, who are staying in the hospital because of their, what do you call, what do you call, um, they, they may be paralyzed, they could not move around, or they, they may be in coma. So what should we do? They ask us, what should we do? So they call the monk up and want to know what to do, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and if you were in, my position, in our position as a spiritual advisor, what should you tell them? And the life of that patient, or keep moving. I think the Buddhist answer would be is that you wouldn't interfere. Make them as comfortable as possible and do what you can and let, let, let nature take its course. Yeah, you from know, the Buddhist point of view. I have one of uh, one close friends. Um, his mom his mother passed away um, last year. But before she passed away, um, she was about eighty five years old. They have to hook her up with the what they call breathing machine. Mm -hmm. When they walk into that um, place in that in the hospital, I thought that this jet machine, that breathing, not her. It's so sad. Now it's so. I think she's so suffering because of that. Now, for of course you think I think you know the answer. For us, we cannot ask them to end the life. Yeah, of course, we, we try our best to prolong the life as much as we can. Um, but if we terminate